I am running a full-time solopreneur business next to two kids. Of course, my wife is helping a lot with that. Um, and I built this next to a more than full-time job. Like when I was building it, I was still doing a more than a full-time job working in film industry, often six days a week, 13 hours a day. Uh, and I already had the kids back then as well. <laughs> and so productivity is a huge thing for me. And I want to um, acknowledge the help and the change and the difference it made for me to really immerse myself in George Cow's uh, joyful productivity um, framework and his eight practices of an authentic business. So it's kind of a, a combined testimonials for, for those two. Um, it really made a calm state possible for me and a state where I can really be present with my kids and family when I'm taking a break. And uh, before that, I was feeling all the time um, overwhelmed. And, and busy and not knowing what I should be working on and not knowing at the end of the day whether I worked on the correct things, on the things that I should be working on. I didn't know if I worked enough on those. I didn't even know what those were. Um, and then when I was with my kids and family, I was feeling like, I was feeling guilty for not working. And when I was working, I was feeling for not being with my kids and family. And it was just horrible. And as my business was growing and is growing, has been growing, it was getting worse and worse. So some time ago, I said, okay, let's stop this. This is this is not good. This, this is not healthy. This is not good. I'm not enjoying it this way. Let's put aside some extra time to revamp my productivity. And I've been familiar with George's stuff uh, before for ages and with his joyful productivity principles and eight practices of the uh, authentic business um but i i was hearing it but i was not necessarily understanding many many points of it and the, the why behind those but i was feeling overwhelmed and i trusted george so i i i kind of knew his stuff is working <laughs> uh and so I put aside, aside some time and I tried, I tried hard, uh, experimented on purpose and learned on purpose and uh, um, was applying stuff on purpose uh, and um, deliberately. And it changed everything. Suddenly I found I know what I have to work on to, to make progress in my business. I know what I what is important, but I can postpone. And I know what is completely not important and completely optional. And I became able to be present with my family again, not being worried and frustrated about, oh, I'm not working on my business. When I'm with them now, I, I know that I've worked enough on the proper parts of my business that I should be working on. And I know exactly how much time... Um, Actually, not in my case, not not exactly how much time, but yeah, what tasks I I should finish before I take rest. Um, <clears throat> so it's it's a huge difference now. It's 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 joyful, <laughs> as George says as well. Now my whole business and productivity is joyful again. And one thing that's interesting was I had a broken system of productivity but until my business grew big enough to make it painful enough for me I was not really caring enough to to, to put the effort in it to, to make it work and to change my own habits and build new habits and change old habits <laughs> but what when my business became bigger and it is still getting bigger. I, I 
I was just so overwhelmed. And I saw that there are enough hours in a day. It's just me not knowing what to work on, not knowing whether I'm working on those stuff. And it's it was a mess. Um, and I was not feeling present with my family. I, I started feeling the pain. And that was enough to finally get started on rebuilding these. And let me share with you the the, the top lessons I had in there. Um, one was that before I just had categories and I was categorizing by deliverables but as George suggests, but I I just had random topics for, for to-dos. And now I have everything categorized under even my calendar, my to-do list, and my my workflow documents, my notes, everything under the eight practices of authentic business. And now I just know how much I have to spend on each, uh, which tasks are really important to finish in that time or which tasks I can postpone. And, oh my God, it's just, I look at my calendar, I look at my to-do list, I look at my tasks and, and notes and it's, it makes sense. I know where to find things. I, it's incredible. <laughs> I know in an emergency, what are the bare minimum things I have to work on. I know what I have to work on to make success sustainable in the long term. It's it's incredible. I love it. Finally, I know what I'm doing, what I should be doing, how I'm doing that. Yeah, this is, this is great. So categorizing, I have subcategories but I categorize everything under the eight principles. The The next one was um, the tools, productivity tools. I was always trying to keep things simple and do everything, like my to-do list, my notes, and everything in one um, application. But it, un, unknown to me, like I was realizing this slowly, uh, it was actually slowing me down and making me frustrated because each tool is designed to do one thing really good, really well, and kind of sucks at the other stuff. So if you have a to-do software, it, it probably will suck in storing your workflow, workflow documents and uh, info sheets and client notes. And yes, I've tried Notion, and although I really love Notion, my main issue with it is that it's just slow. When I have to, when I want to save a quick idea in two seconds, well, Notion takes six seconds to load up. So it's, of course, you can like, um, yeah, there are ways to get around that. Like, Notion is awesome. I'm actually using it for my client notes and my workflow documents organizing the eight principles uh, under the eight principles. Um, <clears throat> but not for the to-dos. I, I started using Todoist. George was recommending that highly and it is awesome. Um, Todoist for my to-dos and it works. It does that in an awesome way. <laughs> and neither is really good for storing my files. So I'm I'm using uh, Google Drive as well for my files. And I think it's not a problem to use several pieces, pieces of software as long as you don't want to integrate them and connect them like with Zapier. Then it gets complicated, takes a lot of time and money out of your pocket and um, a lot, it creates a lot of frustration because one of these change overnight and then the integration fails and it's like, oh, no, um, use them separately. But use, but use them, do use them separately. Um, and actually what connects the overarching system in my head that is there in each are the eight principles. All my to-do categories I categorized under the eight principles. All my workflow documents are categorized under the eight principles. And actually my files are categorized under the, uh, into deliverables, but that's another question. Uh, that's also part of the George's part of George's methodology. Methodology. What else do I have here as big lessons? Um, oh yes, this is something that I learned from George, and I was hearing it, but I was not understood. I even understood, but I was not willing to implement. 
the importance of consciously breaking your unconscious unconscious flow state. It looks like this. You realize, oh, I want to change the two sentences on my website, and then <clears throat> that should take 10 minutes. And then three hours later, you realize you've spent three hours. Something is not working on your website. You maybe even broke some things and you are just frustrated and didn't complete a whole bunch of other tasks that you intended to do and you should have done. So, yeah, we need to set timers and timers are my big friends now. Um, it's for me, it's, it's actually, I usually set a timer of maximum 10 minutes or even sometimes six to 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 just break that flow state and, and to, to come back uh, out of it and and to to be able to reevaluate whether I should continue doing that or postpone or break or forget the whole thing uh, altogether. Um, so I I'm I come from a flow junkie background. I, I easily fall into flow and then I forget about myself and I enjoy it and then then I actually have an actual hangover like regret sometimes even actually headache as well like proper hangover um so yeah that that really helped to to consciously break the flow and run uh timers um and the big lesson was also to that it takes time like i designed my weekly schedule as george recommended and then it sucked it failed. It was not. It was useless. It it was not working. And what we usually say at these times is, "Oh, sure, because I'm a much freer spirit, and I I cannot confine myself to these um, square, <laughs> really rigid structured things." Um, sure. Um, we have. Mm, like neurodiversity, like our neurological systems do differ. Like actually physically, we react to things differently. But I think we use that as an excuse too easily. Because learning something, it should it should never work for the first time. Of course, I think you've heard this million times that Edison had to run, I don't know, 3,000 or 30,000 experiments before. Um, he found a working way to create the light bulb. <laughs> it's it's like that. So I actually went through more than a dozen iterations for my weekly schedule. And now it's working. And the schedule changed. Like how I learned meanwhile how my energy levels work. I learned how my family life schedule works. Uh, I learned meanwhile how my clients like scheduling. I learned what I cannot or what I can schedule in a day, like in amount wise and topics wise, like combining two topics. Like if I do this, deal with this topic, then I really cannot deal with that other topic on the same day. It took me more than a dozen iterations and I think I'm still like a lucky. I, I didn't have to do 3000 and I know it will keep evolving. Um, so this was a great lesson. And I love how George says, like, you should just say, ha, huh, that's interesting. It didn't work that way. Let's see if next time it works slightly differently. <laughs> so that was something that helped me a lot. Um yeah these were the bigger lessons i think um that i learned from george and through george and and this is the difference that it made in my life to to learn about deeply learn about the eight practices of the authentic business and joyful productivity uh framework from him and from his courses and programs um so I highly recommend delving deep into these. <clears throat> and of course, it's it's a frightening amount of information up front. And he keeps saying that, but I know I had to keep hearing that. So I want to say that to you as well. Is 
don't worry about implementing too much of it on the first round or on the 10th round, on the 100th round. He's really doing everything on a PhD level. You will start out on a beginner level and get slowly to the PhD level. And probably some of, some of your systems will look differently than what he's teaching. Some, some of mine do look differently as well. But the core principles are really important not to skip over because I've been doing that and things were not working that way. So the surface things I, I do change, but core things, core um, the core mindsets and, and methods behind the systems, I, I did not change. And that's when I really understood the point of them and started utilizing them, that's when things started to work and they really did start to work. And I did suck in productivity before, big time. So <laughs> uh, I'm absolutely sure you can do, do this change as well. And as I told you, I run a solopreneur business. Um, I have two kids. Um, of course, as I said, um, my wife is, is taking care of most uh, of that. Uh, um those that like ch children really the tasks in my life um i but i also identify as a multi-potentialite and i always have side projects i still work a couple of days now every now and then just for the fun of it in film industry i have a busy life and finally i feel like um calm i don't feel busy i feel productive and I've been wanting to feel that way for ages. And I have arrived with these systems. It's it's actually even a surprise for me. Not, not that George's stuff work, but that, that I'm actually feeling these. At so many points in this journey, I felt like I will never feel calm <laughs> in my productivity. I will feel, never feel accomplished in my productivity and days. And I am. So this is awesome. Thank you so much, George, as well, for, for this. Uh, this stuff is just awesome. Um, and thank you for, thank you so much, um, dear viewer, uh, for your attention as well. Um, I was Peter Warnay. I help solopreneurs in their tech challenges, actually, in my solopreneur business. I'm a father of two, do work some time in film industry as well, and come from the film industry background. I have a lot of side projects in my life. And productivity finally feels great to me. And I hope this is on your journey towards it. You will also reach it. It's not an easy one, but it's a worthwhile one. And... Thank you again so much for watching and have a lovely day. Bye.